Hi, precious friends. Welcome to Proverbs 31 Challenge. I am so excited to be with you. My name is Trinita from Faith to Rise Ministries. And today we are on day 19. And we're moving forward, precious ones. I am cheering you on. You're doing a great job. I'm so proud of you. And uh, I just want to carry on today with chapter 19. God has some great wisdom for us. And I want you to listen clearly to some of these passages. And again, write them down. I remember, you know, years ago when I first started growing in the Lord and I started learning from different preachers on television. And I remember, for instance, Benny Hinn was one of them. I just loved the healing ministry. Rex Humbard, I was a little too small for that. But I do remember... Um, you know, even like laying my hands on the screen and just declaring healing. And I remember he'd say, you want a fresh anointing? And I would just declare that also. Um, but I remember Benny Hinn would share and teach on healing and different topics. And I would just be there with my notepad, just taking notes and really writing out the scriptures, writing out what he said, and just really wanted to learn. And that is still my heart today. And, you know, other other activities and ministries and, and responsibilities have come in the way also. So I have a different way of learning the word. Now I still study the word, but what I find is when you're quite active um, with many responsibilities, you have to improvise. So I listen to the word. So when I get up in the morning, I listen to the audio Bible and I'll go to chapter you know, 19 and I'll study with listening while I'm cooking breakfast and then I'll sit down and read it again and just glean from the word and ask the father, you know, speak to me, Lord, what do you want to say? And, um, you know, I just want to encourage you. He loves it when you're in the word because the word is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. The word of God is your medicine. It is a roadmap to your life. And God lives in this word. Of course, he is the word as John 1, 1 says. Um, and also, you, if you want to know God and you want to know who he is and the beautiful, precious uh, treasure that he is as Lord and Savior and friend, you've got to study the word so you can grow to know him. Now, some of you are going to learn through these chapters and you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, but God, that's pretty harsh stuff. You know, God is God. He's a just God. He's not a cotton fluffy God. He's not a God that, uh, you know, he just pacify sin that's been the word this year for me to tell people you cannot pacify sin and sin is sin and righteousness and purity is from god so the key is um he's calling us to be holy and he's calling us to turn away from wrath turn away from sin turn away from the things that aren't good it's like if if you had a hot stove there and you went over to touch that hot stove You'd be warned, wouldn't you, not to touch that hot stove? Well, you know what? When you're a child, you wouldn't know any different, would you? Sometimes you just look at adventure and what is that? And you go to reach out and touch it until your mom or dad says, don't touch that. It's hot, honey. You could hurt yourself. You could burn yourself, right? So now you understand the reason why you don't want to touch the hot stove. And now you've learned that when you see a red hot stove, it's danger. Well, the same it is for your life. God says, don't touch the hot stove. There are things in life that lead you into folly. There's things in life that lead you into a trap. It could be friends you think that are your greatest friends. There's people that are out to really, they're, they're like Joseph's brothers. They really don't like you. They don't like to see you prosper and they'll try to pull you down. There are so many things that the enemy will try to use to deceive you and discourage you. But I want to encourage you when you stay in the word of God, it is God's medicine and he will help you grow and he will teach you and instruct you in the way you should go as Psalms 32 says. So I want to encourage you in Proverbs 19, we are going to learn some wisdom. So I want you to take notes. Okay. Okay. Here we go, guys. Uh, chapter one, it says better a man who walks, whose walk is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. It is not good to have zeal without knowledge, nor to be hasty and miss his way. So we can gain all the knowledge we want. Um, we can have zeal all we want. But if we have zeal without the word of God, it could lead us astray. We could turn our own way, as Isaiah 53 says, and do what we think is right 
And meanwhile, it we, we could turn to a hasty, you know, person and miss the way. So um, only God is the way. And so you don't want to be turning in haste to any other direction but Jesus. A man's folly runs his life, sorry, a man's folly ruins his life, and yet his heart rages against the Lord. Wealth brings many friends, but a poor man's friends desert him. So, you know, wealth is a nice thing. Wealth brings many friends, but sometimes friends only gather um, when you're wealthy. <laughs> and then when you lose your money, where are they? So the true friend is beyond finances. It's beyond materials. And it says a poor man deserts him. Now you can look at that beyond money and you could be wealthy and rich spiritually. You could be a, a person of wealth with um, your character, your love, your, your, your attributes that you follow in Christ. Um, and you could be poor in spirit, you know, so it could be two different ways that you could really look at that financially or obviously spiritually. Um, a false witness will not go unpunished and he who pours out lies will not go free, not go free. And the key is precious ones. One of the Proverbs and Proverbs, uh, six, I believe it is God hates a lying tongue. He hates it when people shed innocent blood. There's six things God hates and I'm sure there's more, but those are the ones that are noted in Proverbs. And we don't want to get into a position of lying. You know, one of the reasons why, why people lie is sometimes they fear and they struggle in fear. And, um, you know, God understands your heart. But when you confess your sins to somebody and you say, you know what, I did this or I did that wrong. Um, help me. What do I do? You know, God will lead somebody to help you and give you direction. Um, it's really vital. And sometimes you know, you're out there and you're completely innocent and say someone else is trying to set up a trap, you know, <clears throat> it's still important to be uh, transparent, honest to the best of your ability and not fear, you know, because you, you know who you are, you know, your stance in Christ, but here it specifically says, um, <clears throat> that a false witness not goes unpunished, but he who pours out lies will not go free. So don't lie. It's best not to lie. God is the truth. And he came um, to reveal his truth through the word of God. And he wants you to know the truth. And the Bible says the truth shall set you free. So don't lie. Stay, speak the truth. Um, it says many carry favor with a ruler and everyone is a friend to the man who gives gifts. A poor man is shunned by his his by all his relatives. But how much more does how much more do his friends avoid him? Though he pursues them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. Hmm. Sad. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul, and he who cherishes understanding prospers okay so he who gets wisdom loves his own soul that's not being selfish or conceited trust me you have to love yourself love the lord your god with all your heart and love your neighbor as thyself you have to be able to take care of you your know who you are and value your own like the integrity that god's downloaded in your spirit to live out and uh it says get wisdom if you get wisdom you love your own soul. And I want to encourage you, get wisdom. Love who you are. Love God inside. Love God inside of you, Jesus, who, who lives in you if you've given your heart to Jesus. And, um, and if you cherish understanding, you will prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who pours out lies will perish. But it is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury and how much worse for a slave to rule over princes. Verse 11, a man's wisdom gives him patience and it is to his glory to overlook offense. Okay, we've shared that one before. A man's wisdom gives him patience. 
So wisdom helps you be patient. Um, and part of that wisdom is, of course, the gleaning from the word of God. And it's to God's glory to overlook offense. So we're going to do that coming up Christmas, right? When you don't get the gift you want and you're like, I don't want that. And, you know, why didn't you get me this? No, you're not going to do that, are you? You're going to be grateful with everything that you've been given because every gift is good and uh, like within reason, obviously. Um, and it's what you do with the gift is the key. But what I will say is every good and perfect gift comes from God. So verse 12, it says, a king's rage is like a roar of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. Verse 13, a, fool's, a foolish son is his father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping. Okay, so a foolish son is his father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like constant dripping something to really think about in your home. Houses and wealth, listen to this, are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. So it goes to show money is wonderful. You can inherit all the money you want and it's inherited, it's great. But a prudent wife, a wise person in the home, a, a builder of the home um, is from the Lord. And you want to have builders in your home, male and female, husbands and wives, uh, brothers, sisters. You want to build up each other, honor each other like never before. Laziness brings on deep sleep and the shiftless man goes hungry. Verse 16, he who obeys instruction guards his life, but he who is contemptuous of his ways will die. So in other words, obey instruction. When you do, you'll guard your life. Some of us don't like to be told what to do in today's world. Many are doing their own thing. But let me tell you, you need coaches in your life. You need leaders in your life that will guide you and help you to go the way God wants you to go. Verse 17, he who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. I love that one. And he will reward him for what he has done. You lend to those who are poor in spirit, <clears throat> those who even financially poor and just struggling. I tell you, you're lending to the Lord and God honors that. He will bless you abundantly. Discipline, verse 18, um, discipline your son for in that there is hope, but do not be an unwilling party to his death. Verse 19, a hot-tempered man must pay the penalty. If you rescue him, you will have to do it again. Okay, this is huge. <coughs> Excuse me, this is huge. A hot-tempered man must pay the penalty. Now, a hot-tempered man, if he's constantly in rage all the time, angry all the time, there's going to be a penalty. And this is why I tell people, what are you feeding in your mind? There's nothing wrong with being angry, but it's what you do with the anger. And you don't want to internalize it. You don't want to harm anybody in it because God says, be angry and sin not. So there's nothing wrong with having a, an emotion of anger. But when it starts to be hot tempered to the point where it's repetitive um, you really have to work on that because there's an underlying pain. There's underlying issues that God wants to heal in you. And he understands he was angry when he saw them, um, you know, using the temple of his father, the, the house of prayer. And um, they were rejecting Christ and bringing all this probably new agey religious stuff that was nowhere near what God wanted. And of course, using money and wealth uh, to, uh, to deceive many uh, rather than prayer. And, you know, the house of God is a house of prayer. And Jesus got angry about that. So there's nothing wrong with having anger, but a hot tempered man who's always angry, um, it, there's a penalty to pay with that. Not only the penalty could be his own life, it's firstly, high hot tempered people have to realize that if you're constantly living your life like that every single day it affects you physically 
It affects your heart, it affects your, your emotions, your blood vessels, and it's not good for your health. So it could pay a penalty physically, but it also pays a penalty spiritually as well. And so you don't want to be hot tempered. And if you are out there listening to this and you are hot tempered, I want to encourage you, get help, get counsel, read the word, study God, God's word and, and seek help and the right help, not just anybody, but seek trust of people who will empathize with what you're going through. God understands and he'll lead you to the right person to help you as well. And it says here, if you rescue him, you will have to do it again. So in other words, only God, <laughs> only God can rescue a hot tempered man. Have you ever seen um, a gang when they get into these fights? And once one person starts it, the other person follows and the other person follows. And they don't even know why they're involved, but it's just the natural response of sin to gravitate to evil and violence. It's all back to the time of Cain and Abel, precious ones, all the time from sin and the fall of man. And the only way to turn from that is to repent and give your heart to Jesus. And that can free you from the old ways and not just repent and then keep on sinning, but to repent and turn because that's what repentance means. It means to turn away from. And so, um, so, you know, precious ones, you might be dealing with a hot tempered person out there and you're trying to rescue them all the time. And if you're trying to rescue them, that used to be me. I used to always try to calm the storm. And I'm realizing now, flee from hot tempered people. Doesn't mean you can't express anger. It doesn't mean you're, you can't express the pain that you're feeling inside. It's very normal. You're not meant to suppress that. But um, humble yourself and talk to those precious ones in your life of what you're going through. Be humble to change. Be willing to grow. Um, and, and those, like I said earlier, if you're always in this situation where you're always trying to calm a hot tempered person down and try to rescue them, you're going to have to keep doing it over and over again. If you keep thinking that you're the one that's going to rescue them, only Jesus can rescue them. So through prayer, prayer and the right counsel is huge. So I want to encourage you with that. Verse 20, listen to advice. <laughs> Go figure that, right? Listen to advice and accept, accept instruction. And in the end, you will be wise. Okay, so I hope that you receive some of my insight. I hope it helps you. Um, I'm just giving you some coaching wisdom here on some things that I've learned in life and what I've seen others struggle with. And uh, so listen to advice and accept instruction. And in the end, you will be wise. Verse 21. Many are the plans in the, in the man's heart, but it is to the Lord's purpose that prevails. Now, the Lord says in, in Psalms 138.8, the Lord will fulfill his purpose and plan for you because his love endures forever. And so it, you have many plans in your heart, and that's good. Keep those plans, keep those desires, keep those dreams, keep them alive. And then it says, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. So... Don't give up and think, well, it's not God's purpose. So then you don't know. You just keep planting seed, keep doing whatever God leads you to do. And if he shifts the direction, you know, just kind of go with it. And we're all learning that one. Verse 22, what a man desires is unfailing love. Better to be poor than a liar. Okay, that's very self-explanatory. Verse 23, the fear of the Lord leads to life. But one rests content, untouched by trouble. That is so good. You fear God, you're, he leads you to life. Like fearing the Lord leads to life. It is that simple. And when I say fear, I'm, I'm again, I mean not fearing him as you're afraid of him to the point where you want to run away from God. But fear him to reverence him, to run to God that yes, God, you're my safe haven, you're my safe place, you're my only God, and I only want to please you, Lord. And uh, fearing him leads to life. And then one rests content, untouched from trouble. Precious ones, that is huge. Verse 24, um, the sluggard buries his hands in a dish, but he will not even bring it back to his mouth. Verse 25, 
flog a mocker and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke a discerning man and he will gain knowledge. Okay, so a discerning man gains knowledge. You flog a mocker, he'll learn prudence, you know, but you get a discerning man who knows, he'll gain greater knowledge as well in that process. Um, verse 26, he who robs his father and drives out his mother is a son who brings shame and disgrace. Okay, this is really, really important, precious ones. Um, the Bible says in Ephesians 6 to honor your mother and father. And if you do, it'll go well with you. And, uh, you know, all through the Ten Commandments, honor your mother and father, you know. And so it's really, really important to not rob your mom or father ever, 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 ever to honor them, to bless them, because it'll go well with you, even though they might not be the greatest parents, let's say but still don't rob them. Don't steal from them. Don't take anything from them. Not even their dignity. Just, you know, you continue, not even their life. You understand euthanasia is a big thing right now. You just trust God and you let them live as long as God calls you to let them live. Or, or sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. As long as God calls them to live, you leave them be. And let God allow them to live because every minute, every second, every millisecond is vitally important. And did you know, even if your parents are up in age and let's say they're in the hospital and they're struggling and they're, they're sick, my prayer for you is please don't pull the plug. You know, this whole thing about um, dignity and they've got a right to live, they've got a right to die or dignity to die. No, you've got a right to live and your loved ones have a right to live. Jesus gave his all for you. And how much did your family also give their all to their best of their ability? Now, can't compare that to Christ, okay? Christ gave everything for all of us, the whole world. But what I'm saying is he gave you God-ordained authority, gave you parents and, fa and uh, fathers and mothers to love you. And some of them may not have done a great job. Some of them might have struggled because of the way they struggled, right? But what I want to say is never rob them, never steal from them, even when they get in their old age. Don't cast lots for their material possessions before they die. Don't do these things, but instead honor your mother and father like never before. You don't want to bring shame on disgrace and you want to live long and finish strong yourself. So if you do what's right and live those commandments to honor your mom and dad, it's going to go well with you. It's going to go well with you. So don't rob them of their dignity. But also if they've hurt you, if they've done trauma in the past and you've been hurting because of some of the things they've done, forgive them and let them know you're forgiving them and let them know you love them, but you want to make it right. It is so vital because they carry that weight also of will this ever happen? Will we ever reconcile? They desire that because they, some of them probably live in that shame. You know, um, but I want to encourage you, you can make things right and aim for restoration as Second Corinthians uh, 13 says. Right. So but whatever you do, don't rob your mother and father. And it brings only shame and disgrace. You don't want to do that upon yourself or your family. And you want to glorify God. And that's his desire for you to glorify him. So here's verse 27. Here's another wise word. It says, stop listening to instruction, my son and you will stray from the words of knowledge. So you're getting words of knowledge today. God's using this vessel to speak insight to your life today on top of the word he's giving you wisdom. And um, I'm so grateful and honored that he just speaks through me to whatever he wants you to know today, because what I'm sharing, whatever he's asking me to share is all for the glory of God. And, uh, you know, he does not want you to stop listening. Listening is key. Listen and spend quiet time with him. Listen and ask the father every time you do something and just say, Lord, am I doing what's right in your eyes? Is this what you want me to do? You know, seek him. He knows. He knows how hard it is sometimes if we're distracted and active and overwhelmed. But you know what? When you seek the word of God and seek his face, you'll find him and you'll hear from him in a greater scale. He loves you so much. Last verse or second two verses after it says a corrupt witness mocks at justice and the mouth of the wicked engulfs 
down evil. Penalties are prepared for the mockers and beatings for the backs of fools. Okay, so as we go back to some of the other areas uh, when we were talking about, um, you know, listening to advice, accept instruction, and in the end, it will be wise. You will, you will be wise. It's so important. That's um, verse 19. Um, verse 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 20. But again, that whole chapter from verse 19, all the way to the very end, it really gives you an understanding of, it talks about the dangers of, you know, um, angry hearts, hot tempered men, and the plans of, um, you know, the lack of knowledge, the, um, the liars, right? And, um, and how God gives instruction not to rob your family what's precious to him. And then he tells you again, stop listening and instructions, my son, and you will stray. He's making it very clear. If you stop listening to what I'm trying to tell you, God says, not me, God <laughs> says in his word, if you stop listening to instruction, you, it will lead you astray from the words of knowledge. And this is a book of knowledge. And God wants you to grow in wisdom and knowledge in everything that you do in life. And each day is a challenge. Each day sometimes is a test. But when you trust God and, and seek him as your best friend, your father, your savior, everything, he will help you in your days ahead. So I want to pray with you right now and just say, Father, I just thank you for this precious one who is watching this right now. And I pray that you give them prudence, Lord, that you give them wisdom. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help them grow to be all that you've called them to be. I pray, Lord Jesus, that, Father, you pour peace upon them. If there's any emotion of anger or hurt or any lying tongues, Lord, I pray that you would bring them to a place of repentance, Lord, that they would confess their sins as... Um, as you said in James 5, 16, if you confess your sins with one another and pray for one another, then you shall be healed. And so I just pray, Lord, that these precious ones would do that. And I want to encourage you, precious ones, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior right now, would you just say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I have sinned against you. I have wronged you. I have lied. I have done certain things that were wrong and it is wrong. And I come before you and I repent. Jesus, would you um, forgive me from my wrong? And would you um, come into my life? I invite you into my life, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior, to be my friend, to be my, my Savior, my Father, my everything. And Jesus, I pray as I invite you into my life, you will help me every day to grow and to be all that you've called me to be. And Jesus, I ask you that your word would come alive in my spirit. And I thank you for your forgiveness. And I thank you that I am born again today in Jesus name. Amen. Precious ones, if that is you today and you gave your heart to Jesus, guess what? Heaven is celebrating just for you. Heaven and hell are real. Okay, let me tell you this very clearly. Heaven and hell are real. But heaven is the eternal place that God says that we will reap when we all pass away one day. We're going to walk streets of gold sing praises in his home, and we're going to dance with angels and bowing at God's throne. We will be um, in heaven with the Lord and no more tears, no more crying. If you study in Revelation, you'll see that there's a lot of blessing in Revelation 21. Um, and But what I will say is now that you are a new Christian, it's important that you grow. God wants you to spiritually grow. It's not just Shazam, I'm saved and that's it. You need to put it to practice. Um, if, Ephesians, um, let me just do this last verse here. Um, Ephesians, so now that you've got Jesus into your life and um, you're growing, you need to, like a coach, you need to train your mouth. You need to train your attitudes, your life, and start doing things differently. But again, you can't do it on your own. You're going to need the help of the Father. 
And so it's really important, precious ones, that um, as you're getting the help from the father, that you apply it daily. Can you imagine an athlete only just exercising one day a week? It's not going to happen. They, they have to prepare and, and do diligence to train. And so maybe do what I do. And, and that is, um, you know, uh, reading the word as well as um, reading the word as well as, uh, you know, listening to the word. The, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing in the word of God. So a lot of times we just think it just come by reading the word, but faith comes by hearing the word so you hear the pastor preach you hear the minister preach um you're hearing it from teaching from you know great leaders that are speaking on the word of god you hear just the bible itself hearing the word of god and and you know other teachers that can translate for you and help you understand different passages and then you've got the reading of the word so i just want to share this last part it says in in philippians 4 it specifically says whatever is whatever is sorry hang on it talks about whatever's true whatever's noble whatever's admirable think on these things but then later in verse 9 it says whatever you have learned and received and heard from me or seen in me put it to practice and the god of peace will be with you so that's it we've got to read the word study it and put it to practice so if you've given your heart to jesus God wants you to know you got to try to find yourself um, a real good godly church, someone who really cares, a good leader. I could refer some churches. I'm not sure what area you're in, but if you uh, need a good church to go to, feel free. You can inbox me. Uh, you can message me even on YouTube. Um, you can even go on our ministry, faitharise.com, and uh, message me there. Give me a call, and we'd be happy to... Uh, lead you to a church maybe in your area if we know of one and uh, I just want to encourage you get yourself a bible it's the most you know what <laughs> this bible has been through a lot but this bible I think I've glued so many times I love this bible but um, anyway I want to encourage you get yourself a good bible and just study study a little bit of time even if it's one scripture but guess what a good successful person will do this will do something every day repetitively OK, so if you do something every day, you're going to grow to your goals. But if you just do it once in a while, you're going to get a little lazy. So don't go there. Just a little bit every day. You'll grow stronger. And you know what? I want you to know something. You are valuable. You are special. You are so loved. And you know what? Heaven is rejoicing all because of you. And I am rejoicing because you are now a new precious gem, a new creation uh, that God created. Um, meaning you're born again you're you're new in spirit and uh and now is your time for discipleship this is your time for growth so i want you to uh, be blessed i want to encourage you and uh, bless you so much love you guys take care Miigwech.